I pray that, Lord, you may use me as just a vessel as you talk to your people and meet their needs at the point of their needs. You know them better. Father, you know us by our name. We have just come before you with a lot of humility. The Lord God, you may do with us whatever you want us to do, to do with us today. For your purpose to be accomplished at the end of the day. For all these we ask through the Christ name. Amen. Praise God. Bwana sifiwe. Ni wangapi wananijua? Wangapi wananijua? Just raise up your hand. No one. Just raise, raise it straight. Uh -huh, at the back there. My name is Milka Nyambura Kinyanjui. I am not new here. I am now almost feeling like I can shift my church and be one of you. <laughs> I knew it, that evangelist will say so. So uh, I am grateful and very humble before, to stand before you and before God to serve him. I have given my life to him that he may use me the way he wants me to be used of him. I worship with AIC Church, Shabab, next to Red Cross, down there. I am not new with St. Ninians PCA, all PCA St. Ninians. I was here the other day when Wamama Walikua Wanafungwa Vitamba. From this point, uh, this is my third time to speak from here, from this pulpit. I have also had uh, a time with Sunday school teachers, I think parish, Sunday school teachers at PCA Marigoini, if I get it. Somewhere, Orurungai, Hukodani. So I am not very new to, me, to, to you people. Uh, Sunday school came here, and I saw one of my household saying, Isaiah, that when things are right, God will do it. So I was like, huyu alienda Sunday school saa ngapi? Nilifikiria sisi ni wageni. But I thank God because service to God, it, it is done anywhere. It is not about where we worship. It is not about where you are. It is about who liveth in you. And how you do things for him. And today, I just want to take shortest time possible. I know the person behind me is a timekeeper somewhere. He knows how to keep time even without bells, so he can even guess when the time is off. My, my readings have been made from 2 Timothy. My topic being vessels of honorable use. Vessels of honorable use. When I reflect Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, the Bible talks of different people that God has called. That some have been called to be apostles, others have been called to be evangelists, others to be the teachers, others to be everything, so that the body of Christ will be edified. I am not sure whether I'm a preacher, but at the end of the day, I know that I will communicate the will of God because he has called me to be used of him this morning. And I said yes. According to the scripture that it has been led, the second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, it says, In a large house there are dishes and bowls of all kind. Some are made of silver and gold, others of wood and clay. Some for special occasions, others for ordinary use. If anyone makes himself or herself clean from all those evil things, they will be used of special purposes because they are dedicated and useful to their master, ready to be used for every good deed. Buana asifiwe. I start with an introduction of what a vessel is. What is a vessel? 
And the Oxford Dictionary told me that a vessel is a horror container. So I guess that a vessel is something that can carry something in it. A container not just, you know what is a container? We, we are not told that vessels are plates. They are not spoons. It is a container. Another word for a container, it's something that con can contain something else in it. So the dictionary is giving an example of a vessel as a cup or a flower vase. So these things are, or these are the vessel or some of the utensils that we can use to put things inside them. And they are faithful such that they can carry whatever is put inside them to a certain distance or to accomplish the missions of the user. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, Paul is introducing the concept of vessels of honor and common vessels. He's talking of a vessel of honor for the use of a master. And also in this large house, there are vessels of ordinary use. Wamama wanaelewa hivi vizuri sana. I think if there are people who understand this, in their houses there, I was brought up in a ire style ya kikombe cha mgeni. Nani alisema utumie kikombe? No, ugire. Why? And so years come, we could watch our mother akiwa mepanga vitu kwa cupboard ambavo kila wakati unaambiwa kapanguze vumbi na haujai kunywa nayo. So sometimes it was confusing. And I've seen now, I don't want to call people rebellious because of, I have a, a, one of the representative, I am sorry, I didn't say who I am. I said my name, and then I said I'm a family person. I didn't say that part. I am a widow. The first time I spoke here, it was only six months down the line after burying my husband. And when I was called to speak here, I did not compromise because we have an agreement with my maker that I'll work for him in and out of season. So even the person who called me here did not know what I was going through. She is a friend. We have worked in the children ministry for many years, but she didn't know what I was going through for that time. And within my discussion, I was, do I? Ama nijipe sababu? And then the Holy Spirit is always there telling me, remember what you said to your father, that you will work in and out of season. So I have one of the representatives of my house faith. Stand, please. You are not old. And I don't know why you are wearing red. Uh-huh. She's the third born in my house. I was left when the, the person was saying, Isaiah here. She was just two, year, two and a half years. And we have seen the faithfulness of God. This is a part, if not this service, see what wengi wagejua. I don't speak about it. I have people even who send greeting even today. And I don't tell them about my status. If you don't know, weka vire unajua. Kwa sababu, because of a certain uh, defensive mechanism. If you are not left, at one point, you cannot understand what I'm, going, uh, I'm saying. What we go through as widows, sometimes it is not understood. But one thing I decided, I'll hide my face under my father, who tells me that he is my husband and father to my children. And for sure he has been real. I don't complain at any time. Sometimes I have two adults who come home and argue. I was left when the firstborn was in that year, campus. And today, as the speaker or the, the, the person who was reading the praises, anaongozo na roho wa mungu, kuinua roho yangu, ya kwamba kama sio wewe umenibeba kwa mikono yako, singeweza. The second born is through with campus. She was graduating in, uh, uh, on 4th of October. It is not about me. And when I feel this, I feel like praising God and serving him more because of what he has been to me. More of me, you imetosha. Back to there. I desire to be this great and useful vessel in this house of my father. 
Paul is telling us of common and special vessels. And I was talking about my mother who rested some many, many years ago. And somebody talks about widows and most of the time we don't get widowers. My father married at 80. Are we together? So it is about the grace. Maybe ladies wamepewa grace ya kutosha kuliko wanaume. We don't complain. And we don't, we, we, we don't, we don't do what? Atusemi ya kwamba hawa wanaume wawezi simama. I was telling a friend somewhere, grace ni tofauti. The grace that I'm given, the grace ladies have to take care of children and the household alone. A man cannot. In fact, ni wewe tu anajua congregation wachungaji na elders wao ndio watakuwa number 1 kusema fulani uliachwa sasa anza kufikiria but it is very hard with the lady Another time my friend says now you can I think you can you can and I told them if you have somebody in mind tell them Gabriela is just in grade 3 when she will be through with college I can now start thinking of who else is next to me I am comfortable the way I am. And I am ready to serve God the way I am. So, Paul is talking of these honorable vessels. And I've said, I wish, I want to be one of the honorable vessels. And Paul is telling us in this verse that all these vessels are in the same house with one master. By the end of today, when we teach in school, we always have that part. At the end of the lesson, I want children to, to, to have learned this. So by the end of this sermon, I want you to be somewhere together with me. Where do you want to be specifically? In this house, house of the master, and in our case here, our master is the king of kings, the lion of Judah. We are all here. The vessels made of gold, the vessels made of silver, the vessels made of clay and even the wood is there. Where are you? So I said, all the vessels are in the same house, meaning they are in the same environment and the same owner. The difference, however, came where the use and the hardening of these vessels. The vessels of different they are different because they have distinct materials of, in making. That's why they are making. They are just called vessels of honor. Others of the other Bibiria was talking about of dishonorable. I am talking about vessels of honor and ordinary vessels. At home, we have those ordinary vessels. And I don't know who said in Africa that the uh, ordinary cups, the ordinary nizawatoto, usipe mtoto kikombe chakauro, Nilisema kwangu, ile notation nililelewa na mamangu, saying hizi ni vyombo vya wageni. Na unajua wakati huo wageni walikuwa napatikana baada ya muda gani? Even three years. Mpaka shosho, wakiambua kuje kutembea. Wao diyo wageni. All there is another gathering. And we used to obey. But now with the generation that we are living in, if you are taking care of a Gen Z, I am within Gen Z, three of them. Firstborn, dianazia Gen Z. Last, the third born there, anamalizia pande yenye inaitua GNZ, hapa chini. So whenever we, we, we prepare any meal, they are telling me, na mami hizi vyombo ni zanani, and I have learned to keep quiet. And they get in. Gabriela, the small one, is the worst. Anaingia dani, anachukua yenye hata we mwenye rabda ujatumia kwa mda. Na anachukua na anatumia. They are honorable. Ananiambia, zinawekewa nani, and I have learned to say, even you, you are also honorable. You are also my guest. Use them. So, Paul is talking about these different vessels. But they are the same, they belong to the same owner and they are in the same house, in the same cupboard. But the uses are different. The way they are handled is also different. What distinguishes them? The nature. How they are made. Umetengenezwa na mekingani wewe. Before Mungu wako, how are you made? Can he count you that you can be used in times of calamity? I want to start with the making of gold. 
The vessel that is made of gold. You know, a teacher is the only mad person who is organized. I made some teaching objects somewhere I, and I didn't carry them. I had a spoon and had another one modeled with a plasticine and I forgot them. I had a wooden, so you will imagine you are seeing them here. So there is this gold, the spoon that is made of gold. Wamama tukosokoni, we have seen these spoons, eating spoons, made of gold, all coated with gold. And everybody is going for them. The others who are, which are coated with silver, we try so that when our guest comes to our home, we also make sure that they see we are somewhere. I also have a cooking spoon that is made of wood. And also there is a clay one. We know all the pots. Most of the time, the pots we use to use mashambani, they are made of clay. So these are the people whom we have or we are seated here in our father's house. It is about, by the end of my examination, you will evaluate yourself and find yourself where you are and improve to the next level. The nature of these vessels distinguishes how they are. They are made of simple materials, others are made of expensive material. The storage. How are the vessels storage? You don't want to tell me, ire jikoni yetu ya mashambani, kuni pare ju, na moto wapa chini. You will not find that cup that is, I am talking about, that mommy said you should not use it there. But in the big, the, the, the nyumba tulizoea kusema nyumba kubwa. That is where you will find another cupboard that is special. So you see that these honorable vessels, even the way their storage is different from the ordinary vessels. Ingine iriosho ikaweko hapo beze na ikaachwa jikoni na hatu kujari kama mrango pale nje umefungwa. No one can steal them. They are ordinary. But they belong to one person. Then the care and the maintenance is another thing that brings the difference between the vessels. How are they cared for? We, unabeba hicho kikombe aje. Don't give that cup to a child. That child cannot use that cup. She's going to break it. I don't have money to, and you can imagine, and so on and so on. Si unajizikia mama, vire unaongea nyumbani. Only mothers who can understand this. The care and the maintenance, the way you wipe, the way you want them to be somewhere the, the dust cannot access. The usage, it's another way that distinguishes these vessels. How often are you used? How often do you use a certain cup in your house? How often is God using us? Are you ordinary? Are you spared for a certain mission that caused praying and fasting and seeking the will of God before we go for a certain mission. This is, these are the things that are making these vessels different, even if they belong to the same person and they are in the same house. Now, the symbolic representative or the meaning of these things, the vessels of honor represent the sacredness and the holiness We have talked about the vessels made of silver and gold. And we know as Christians we are, cannot be made of silver and gold. Automatic. Our body is made of blood and flesh. So we need to symbolize this cup that is made of silver. This cup that is made of gold. How? Most of the time... Tunasema ya kwamba thahabu nzuri upitishwa kwa moto. All the gold is passed through fires and it cannot change. These are the vessels that God wants to use for a special mission. Paul is talking about they are set aside, they are set apart for the master to use them for a special way. Whereas there is the ordinary, the wooden uh, things and the clay things. I want to reflect back on how I'm brought up. When mommy could leave Gedheri on fire, and she says, take care of this, make sure. And you know, the African women, all the African people can talk. And when they talk, GNZ, Sai, watakuwa confused, but that time we used to understand. Na musiongeze moto Gedheri, mutakuja kunikura. 
That's how we were used to be taught. And we could understand that, that by that, Mami is saying, we must take care of that food before she comes and she finds it's ready. So there was another mistake that we could make. The big pieces of kuni, you put them under the pot and you know the shape of the pot and you could put that kuni without measuring the distance and you hit the bottom part of the pot. And what happened? Mutakura githeri squeal. And then, mom will come back. She will not stay forever. So these are things, the vessels that we are talking about, they must be handled with care. We have talked about sacredness and holiness. The other vessels in the house of God that are so rigid, they cannot exercise this. But they are trying. We say they belong to the same master. And the master loves them equally. But the use is different. God from heaven knows that this person can be used for this mission. There are some people who are just wanakwazika kwa vitu vidogo. You touch them, they are broken. Unaweka chini kuni, unaguza the edge of the pot, moto imezimika. What next? The pastor said this, I cannot, I had a dialogue with somebody yesterday and he was just saying, you know, mimi ni mtu wa chini, nisijui nauza nini, people can't like us, they are never recognized in church. And I told him, be faithful with what you have. It is not about the pastor. It is about the master who called you to the, be in the house. It is not about the people we will fellowship with. And you know, when you are faithful with your giving, when you are faithful with your service, it is God who realizes what you are doing and he will bring to you people of the same nature. It is not about making people happy. It is about knowing who is your master, who is your maker, who called you. Who made you the way you are? Who has assigned you for a certain mission? Then you'll be able to continue. Common vessels represent a life that is distracted with worldly cares. That is what I've been saying. Nirienda kwa hiyo fellowship and akina mama were not looking me very well because I had not dressed well. They came to my fellowship. They came to my home for fellowship. I saw the way we, they were looking at my seat. Don't care about the worldly things. Don't be a ordinary vessel. At this time, I have, I have gone through a lot with my children. I have gone through a lot. I have a friend who is teacher gratis, but she did not know what I was going through. I don't talk with anyone. I know who I should talk to. When I open this book, he tells me he's the father. I have seen God taking care of my children even when I'm asleep. I've seen myself struggling with issues. What do I do tomorrow? And I tell them, let us take it turns is a rohoni. Those are the books that we have in the house. And we start praising Nanisane Usiku, switching off everything. And then before you sleep, you wonder, who was not asleep at Sanne Usiku? Who is heading an M-Pesa at Sanne Usiku? Who is that person, if not God? And then a sister, your mom, somewhere, says, Nyambura, umerara. Unajua kuna kitu nimeweka kwa simu. Nimewafikiria tu. Sasa anti, sahi, unafanya nini mama mze ujarara? You know, you ask yourself, but I have a father. I believe there is a father who takes care of me as a husband and the father. And I always teach them. And they know. Don't ask me anything before you tell your father. Even the little Gabriela here knows, and she would encourage me every time, Mom, I don't want to have you to have stress. So I have learned to encourage myself. And by the way, my self-esteem is always very high. That's why you'll never know my status. Very, very high. I know the person that I believe in, to meweka memorandum of understanding with my God. You will take care of this so that any time, I will not be hinder, I'll not be hindered to go and serve you because of what I don't have. And I've seen him talking. I've seen people going to the heaven's gate. I've not been there. Going for prayer there. And then they come back and tell me, you know, I've been fasting and God told me to bring this money to you. And then I told him, I'm like, Aje, 
tena nasahau nilikuwa nimeomba na ninaweka pesa nasema huu mtu lazima awe ananichezea these amount is too much to be given and it's not a man of course so and after all like, she calls and tell me did you use the money it was around valentine i told you to go out for valentine kamwambia wewe acha mchezo tell me the use of the money i am saying and then she comes down and tell me do you know what i went for prayers i did not have these and these in my house but god told me to give you this money what else do i need i don't need to struggle i need to serve god and then he takes care of my things the impact that is made with the useful vessels and the influence the people who are the vessels of honor have great and positive impact to those around them people with who are common vessels may bleed into the environment thus having minimal impact i have all the reason i want to use myself more than anybody else i have all the reason i need somebody to take care of the school fees of my babies i can do this and this and this and god understand but i have decided never and i was sharing with one I said my children will never be educated with anything that is not just before the eyes of God and they know fukuzwa shule ukae nyumbani our father will provide if he does not provide we will continue with our state that's my stand and when God tells me to do something I will do it not considering they don't have when uh, i went through the hardship and reverend who is reverend Ka, uh, now he's bishop kagiri a full gospel i work with all churches i i used to wear, go to church to to their church i was very weak i could not go back to my church his church is just a walking distance from where i, I live and he told me something that i'll never remember uh, forget he told me mama shiro Make sure you walk shoulder high. Make sure you serve God more than before. Make sure you are not desperate for people to help you. Widows can also help other people and I stood with us. I stood with that. And I remember by that time I could not understand but then I started learning. Akaniambia, "Mama Shiru kijifanya desperate, utaletewa nguo ambazo hujaiva." utaletewa mchere ambao hujaisimama kwa duka kununua so i was like what are you saying then god help me and i i don't want to talk much but i want to say that i have been a giver more than a receiver not because i have because i purpose i know there is a lot of blessings in giving and i want to be an honorable vessel not 100% but i'm trying paul is talking about striving We must strive to be honorable vessels in the house of our father. The concepts that we have thinking about the vessels of honor and the vessels of uh, of ordinary use. The vessels of honor represent the individuals who are set apart for special purposes that God want to use them for special purposes. I'm surprised this morning as i stand here and nimesikia kwa matangazo one of you went through a very hard moment on wednesday and on friday in a certain occasion i was in i was able to interact with that lady and she was a guest speaker wherever i was and you know her statement is i'm not the one who was banned so i have to serve and i told her you know i'm coming to your church to speak on sunday oh i'm very sorry i'm also speaking in another church i'm not the one who is banned Those are the honorable vessels that God is looking for. Mchungaji anahitaji watu ambao watamsaidia katika ministry, not only pin pointing. Pastor Jafanya Pastor has not done. He's a human being. He need people to lift up his hands like Moses. People of honor, vessels of honor, they will stand with the pastor, not only with financial they will pray for him, they will encourage him, they will visit them. because also pastors go through many things that they cannot say in public let us all desire to be this now we are set apart through purification when i was talking with the within the vestry uh, evangelist together was talking 
about this word in Kikuyu, and it sings very well. He will come here and recite the poem about purification and sanctification. We need to be purified. We need to be sanctified to be vessels of honor. We don't need to be clay. We don't need to be wood that when fires come, who said Christianity is about butter and bread? No. Christianity is about going through what I've gone through and still serving and standing faithful before my God. So we need to be sanctified. We need to learn how to say no to ungodly. We have said that the ordinary vessels, <coughs> sorry, they are, these represent the people who are compromising with the world. Ah, hii kabiashara kamefika na diyo pesa imekosa, mungu wa Let me transact the illegal business and then I'll go back and repent. You are an ordinary vessel. And the master knows. Let's learn to say no to ungodly. Let us be sanctified. Let's purification process go through us. It is not easy. So that when we are passed through the fires, there are so many challenges in this world. We will not be burnt like wood. Kuna watu ambao waliokoka, but when temptation came, they were forgotten. They forget whether they were saved and they went missing. Those are the, the clay or the wood vessels. But you need to stand. Be like this silver. Maybe you'll just fade. Silver, when it is passed through the fire, will fade. But it will stand. Now the gold will not change the color. Instead, it will shine more when you go through fires. God is calling us this morning to be vessels of honorable use in his uh, house. Let us have a self-examination. Paul encourages be believers to examine their lives. Are we living like vessels of honor or ordinary vessels? This reflection can lead to the desire of spiritual growth and deepen your commitment with God. Maybe we do not know. We may stick in church, ears come, and the testimony we give is, I was a member of this church before the foundation was made. But before God, are you a vessel of honor or are you an ordinary vessel? We need to go through purification. You remember the story of Isaiah in chapter 6 of Isaiah? When Uzziah dies, this is when Isaiah realizes I was an ordinary vessel. And I need to grow to a, a stage where be, I become now a vessel of honor. And we saw the process that Isaiah went, a process of purification. When Meserafi wanakuja wanaweka ka la moto katika mdomo wake, he realizes his mouth is dirty, his lips are dirty. And when he went through the process of purification, the Bible in verse 8 says, Now God says, Whom shall we send? Who shall go for us? And Isaiah was able to see, Now send me God. Before then, he could not be able to say so. He was a man of many things. It is my prayer this morning. I am not the best, but at a mimi, I am striving. Paul talks about pressing on to the goal. Let us press to be honorable vessels. When I read these verses, I was surprised. And I, I was confused. Even if I'm talking here, I am not sure which vessel I am. I am striving, and my prayer is, make me a vessel of honor, oh my God. Readiness to work, that's another part. We need to be ready, like Isaiah. Whom shall we send? God is still calling from his throne. Who shall we send? Are we vessels of honor? Can we be sent where there is a lot of calamities, where people are downcasted, there is no hope? All we say, Kai, tunaenda maombolezi. Furani ya Me, I am not strong. I cannot be able to encourage. Or, you are the person who is coming. I have talked about one of you who is preaching somewhere today. And some of us, we, we are there saying, Tafadhali mchungaji, today I am not making to church. Pray for me. Nikona homa kali sana. 
One person is going out to preach in the same congregation and we are all saved by the way. The Bible talks about different vessels in the same house for the same owner. But they are weak vessels. We need to grow. And now the things that we are telling our pastor to pray for us, all the things that we are doing because our pastor did not appear in the fellowship in my home, it won't okay. We need to go out and encourage others. We need to work together with our pastors. And the Bible is saying, kazi ya mungu ni nyingi. Watenda kazi ni wa chache. It is not about where I'm studying. Serving God is not from the pulpit. There are a lot of things. Visit the widows. Visit the orphans. And one of my daughter, the second one, she's very prayerful. She, she always tells me, and mom, when you are going to help, don't go with cameras. This is what is aiding us. We went to visit a children's home for record, for what purpose? We are not being vessels of honor. The Bible says whatever this heart gives, this one should not know. And what about today? And she always reminds me and I was like, yes, I did not know that part. That mom tells your friends, whenever you're going to help, don't carry cameras. If you're going out for God, don't carry those cameras. They are for what purpose? What do you need those photos to do with? To show people what you did? Then there is no glory to God there. The glory is upon you and the group that you went with. That you that you are supporting in education, must people know? Must she be a slave to you? That ukija nagari within the compound, razima oshe gari rako? Because you paid a school fees at a certain point? You are not being a vessel of honor. Let us desire to be a vessel of honor. And as I, uh, I conclude, I'm saying, let us have commitment, spiritual conditions and commitment to God. Let us just be committed. Let us desire. One time I did not know how to pray. I was a person who could stand and tuombeshe and my hand sweats and I feel like as they wait. So I desired to grow. I desired to serve God until now I can stand. Not very well, but I'm trying. I'm still pressing on. I know this day is for widows and single. The word of God speaks to all. My sisters and my brother, old brothers, whoever they are here. I said the other time, the grace is different. For that man who is alone, Give yourself time. I preach the true gospel. Give yourself time. I gave an example. My father married at 80. So what does that mean? Men surviving alone, not possible. You pity them. Now because of that, we don't want to expose them. Let's pray to God that they will get their spouses as they continue serving God. It is not getting the spouses outside. For ladies who are singles and they would like to mingle, it is allowed. If the grace is sufficient, I said, mine I feel ikohuko chini ya magoti. I want to take care of the person, the children of the person who I loved most. With a lot of seriousness and also serving God. Because serving God is sweet. Now I want to remind ourselves, when you go through any grief, now for our sister, I did not talk about you. I know it is your Sunday and our brothers. When you go through sorrows, do these eight things. Stand up. In the second Samuel, chapter 12, verse 20 to 21, just stand. Arise. After morning, arise. Take a bath. This is what David did after the child died. The child he got with Uriah's wife. He fasted for the baby healing, but the baby died. And so he arose. He used to be on the ground. He arose. He took a bath. By taking bath, wash your pain. Anoint yourself through the Holy Spirit. Change the clothes. This is what David did. By changing clothes, I mean do a thanksgiving. This is what I did with my children. I said, God, thank you. And we went to my pastor. Thank you for the many years you give the dad to us. And now, Lord, I pray that now as we start new life, 
and new experiences, new challenges walk with us. He has been very faithful. So give a thanks, do a thanksgiving ceremony, enter into the sanctuary. This is what David says. What does that mean? Welcome God's presence in your life. Then worship him. Number six, be at home. David was at home. At home, I mean, be within a conducive environment. Don't expose yourself that because you are single, ni wewe unaenda home saa sita, usiku. You are exposing yourself to many dangers. Be very, very safe. And then, David ate. Akaambia wafanyikazi return food. When they were all worried, tunaenda kumuambia mtoto wa meaga, rafu, what will happen? And how he has been fasting when the child was sick. Then David told them, is he dead? Bring me food. So eat. By eating, I mean, take the word of God. Pray to the Holy Spirit, who is your helper, to come and walk with you. And for the people who are not grieving, the people who are not now going sorrows, I've talked to those people, there are four or five stages of grieving. May you be a help. May you be a vessel of honor. If you have a friend who have lost in any way, a man walked out of the house and the lady became single. A man rested, a wife rested. These are the people who are grieving. They are the stages of grieving. Walk with these people. The first stage, there is denial. This person you have been living with them, they are now fighting with denial. Anakata, aikufanyika, it's like a dream. Then the next stage, they come to anger. I have gone through this. I hated people. I hated people. And God helped me. I went through the stage well. Then there is a, a, a stage of bargaining. I wish I did this. Mom hagenda. I wish I did this. Then the fourth is not for all. But it can happen. A stage of depression. This is when the grief is prolonged. Wakati motu wa meon kwa muda mrefu. They can go into a depression. Na wako kati yetu na hatujui. So let us be a vessel of honor. Let, let us help them to overcome whatever they are going through. And the last stage, I believe I am there, it is a stage of acceptance. I have accepted what happened. I know that I am taking care of the children alone and I've told God to come and help me. So may God bless you so much. May God make you vessels of honor. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you for your word, O oh God. I may not speak your oracles as you would wish. I pray this morning that you will continue through your Holy Spirit to elaborate this word to your people for the glory and honor of your name. I pray the Lord God as we continue, you will be with us until the end, for it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. God bless you so much. God keep you.